how would you react if everyone you knew suddenly told you that they had decided to give up flying until we've solved the climate crisis? That they had realized that if we don't do everything in our power to cut emissions now, there will be no planet left to explore in the future. Although we are in the well, middle of an acute time. climate crisis, although we are in the middle of an acute climate crisis, most of us continue to live our lives as usual. That's not because we don't care. It's because we humans tend to act like everyone else. And the advantage of that is that if enough people take action, change can happen fast. We ran the campaign Flight Free 2020, in which people pledged to stay on the ground next year, provided that 100,000 people from their country promised to do the same thing. To refrain from flying is one of the most important things you can do as an indiv individual to cut your emissions. But the biggest difference is in how this decision affects people around you. So if you sign up for this campaign, chances are big that your friends will do the same. And this also applies for the reverse scenario. If you keep flying, then so will your friends. So our campaign aims, aims to break the current flight norm. And it's also a way to show both our politicians and each other that we are many who are willing to change our lifestyle to save the climate. And since I started this campaign, I've learned some important things. The first thing I learned is that most people aren't aware of just how huge the climate impact from flying really is. For example, the average Swede fly abroad once a year, equivalent to the distance between Stockholm and Spain. And only through that trip, you emit about one ton of carbon dioxide equivalents, which is the amount that we need to decrease our uh, emissions to in total. And many Swedes fly much more than that. Uh, Thailand is a very popular destination. But if everyone in the world would go on a yearly trip to Thailand, the global total emissions would increase with 50% when they instead need to be cut in half as soon as possible. And this example really illustrates just how unequally emissions are distributed over the world. About 80% of the world's population has never been on a plane, and only 3% fly on an annual basis. The second thing I've learned is that most people aren't aware that we are in an acute climate crisis. When I'm out campaigning and I speak to people in the streets, I usually start with asking them if they are worried about climate change. And then most people do say yes, but if I keep asking them what they are worried about, it's very clear that most people don't at all know just how serious this situation is. Many people still believe that climate change is something that will happen to someone else, somewhere else in a distant future. And the third thing that I've learned, and this is the good part, it is that it's possible to affect people. Many people are willing to fight for the climate if they realize how serious the situation is, but also the importance of their own actions. Therefore, we who have realized how serious the situation is, we need to be brave enough to talk about it. So don't assume that people around you don't care. Assume that everyone would do everything it takes to uh, save the climate if they knew what is at stake. Running this campaign has made me realize that a change is possible. And I feel more hopeful than I have done in a long time. I am so glad that I went from just thinking that I should do something to actually doing it. So I'd really like to encourage everyone who has a, have an idea that you think may contribute to solve the climate crisis to just go for it. We started this campaign here in Sweden last year, but since it's been recognized by international, me international media, it's now spread to several other countries. It's now run in the UK, Denmark, Belgium and France, and several other countries are about to start a campaign as well. And everyone from all over the world can sign up already by going to our website, westayontheground.org. And it's the same idea in all countries. If you reach the goal of 100,000 pledges, you collectively take a flight-free year. 
And we want this campaign to be run in as many countries as possible. So if you're interested in helping us out, please contact us and we will help you to get started. Because nobody can save the climate on their own, but together we still have a chance. Uh, I would also like to give climate love to some very important uh, um, initiatives. The first one is Peter Kalmus, no, si no, I'll have to see this. No Fly Climate Sci. Uh, it's for scientists. They, um, in this initiative, they try to reduce flying as much as possible. And this is so important because for many universities and institutions, flying is the biggest emission post. And it's also very important that scientists take the lead and show people what needs to be done for them to understand how serious the situation is. So please agree to their campaign to show your support. Uh, and I'd also like to give Climate Lab to the Swedish business magazine Veckans Affärer, because they have introduced a campaign where they challenge companies to cut their business trips by flying in half. Uh, and this is also a really good initiative because so many business trips or business flights could be avoided by technical solutions or by taking the train instead. So please agree to this campaign to send climate love to Veckans Affärer as well.